in, yep. in times like this. And I moved to Idaho. <laughs> so I, and that's why I think having some sense of faith is important um, yeah. because right. it's a stabilizing factor. Um, I know for me, you know, my boat's not rocking, my anchor's shore. Um, I have a lot of stuff going on around me. My daughter right. contracted COVID. Um, yep. You know, there's just stuff happening, but at the same time, I I refuse to to allow my boat to to be tossed Same. to and fro yeah. with every wind, every cray mm-hmm. cray that happens, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was even I'll, I'll stop in a minute, but I was even sharing with uh, some friends about what happened at the Capitol. You know, people are acting like we have never done this process of certifying elections before. <laughs> I said all they're doing is revealing their level of ignorance and and the, or the fact that they didn't um, actually listen in U.S. government when they were in high school. I mean, this right. is not new, and and the fact <laughs> that people think it is new, you know, in terms of the process we go through, is a real revelation mm-hmm. of, of the ignorance level in our society. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know, because anybody could have done with that with the former president did but they just had more sense and like recognize mm-hmm. the, the process has already votes happen nobody's cheated nobody's stolen no. anything let's just move forward you know yeah. let's let's move forward and see what this person is going to do so anyway yeah. so well, and just with, to let with you guys Trump know we're november ready. was it the morning of the fourth you know, throwing his temper tantrum. Why are they still counting votes? <laughs> they shouldn't have counted any after November 3rd. It's like, oh my gosh. And yet millions of people, like you said, Cheryl, are standing by him going, yes, why? It's after midnight. <laughs> you don't have to be smart to be rich. That's all that's an example of. Yeah. I am telling, telling you. you. <laughs> and he, and he, already, he, he already declared that if he lost, it would be, it was, it was because it was rigged. You already declared that they believe that declaration yeah. even before the the, the incident yeah. happened. You know, sure. I was thinking of you because you know your boat's been rocked in ways that m- most of us haven't experienced. Right. And so you are uh, prepared and grounded and seen and and seen uh, how the Lord's taking you through those storms, which I can't even imagine. So it's really an honor to to be with you today because you know I've. I've looked on um, to see what you have gone through through the years, and 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 you've come out strong. Yep. In your faith. Yeah, I was going to bring that up today too because um, I feel as if, in my observations, you know, to your point, both of you, is that um, the uh, the coping mechanisms are just not in place for America and the the slightest latest rumor fad um, uh, headline um, conspiracy theory whatever just throws everybody so off their game they're just not you know grounded and rooted and you know not even in the boat to have the boat rocking you know um and I, I just I feel like I, I just want to see America get some some coping skills, you know, like when we, we raise up our children, we teach them and, and we give them these tools. And yeah. when people go into therapy, going through life as they're battling this or they're battling that, their psychiatrist, therapist, whoever gives them tools, you know, these are coping mechanisms these are skills these are tools that you can use to apply you know when all this comes up Uh, one thing i thought of uh, cheryl is when you're talking about when you're squeezed you know i coached soccer for whatever 12 years men's boy soccer and i raised up my kids as if they were my own and i said now remember you know it, we might be down by one right now. And my boys were hardly ever down, hardly ever lost. So it was very, very rare for them. And I would say, you're being squeezed. You're being squeezed so tight and you can feel the pressure. You know, it's palpable. We can all feel the pressure. But mm-hmm. it's what comes out in those moments yeah. is who you really are and what you're really capable of when you're squeezed to that degree. And so it is in life for each and every one of us. You know, we're going through this season of of tremendous pressure and squeezing and you know uh, you know we're going through the refiner's fire you know really and and what comes out is exactly what's been there the whole time and it has been so uh disturbingly eye-opening Cheryl to see people that we've loved and respected and admired for decades and that deep little dark 
whatever that is, has been hiding all those years. And yet in this season, it came out. Um, we're not on yet, are we? No, I am going I'm to wait, write a yeah, book. Um, as soon as you want to came up with this in April. I'm going to write a book called The Season of the Great Reveal. Mm -hmm. And it is this season of life that we have been going through with, um, you know, the, the racial injustices. And, um, and this is even before George was killed, you know, because we still have been grieving over Trayvon and Michael and Sandra and Tamir and everybody else, you know, mm -hmm. so that kind of was going in the whole Trump thing all these years and just a tumultuous time. And then going into COVID and just seeing people losing their minds and then into George and it's like, oh, I am so writing this book. It has been the season of the great reveal. So much that has been hidden truly has been taken from the darkness and brought into the light and it's been a very revealing time indeed <laughs> yeah it's definitely challenging you know there's people whose lives haven't much changed because of mm -hmm. COVID in the sense that they're, they've been able to continue to work because they've been deemed an essential worker sure. or um, they're in the medical profession or the, the, it isn't Amazon, for instance, their business is an impact, in fact, it's enhanced, you know, and then there's, there's, there's people who are semi sort of working and finding out their relevance of who they were, like sports and entertainment, I thought it was kind of a wake up call slap in the face, you people really aren't that significant. I mean, it, what you are, are sports and entertainment, right. for real, mm -hmm. you know, and so that's not essential to right. people's lives, right? And then, no. then there's the people whose lives were totally disrupted. Mm -hmm. who have to you know not go to school they some many have lost their jobs or are forced to work in, in from home and they're not even accustomed to that and there are kids at home who they've never raised because the school they had the school had them and then the daycare had them and they used to weekends only mm -hmm. um you right. know it's, it's so those people are the people who are at the biggest <laughs> risk right because their lives and the emotional well-being of that um how they're coping with all of that responsibility quote that they've never had mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. um and i i've even dealt with it with my own team you know where i've had to coach the moms that work for me like you know um you can do this these are your mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. okay and if they bad whose fault is that you know i, right. you know, we, right. I said, so this is a great opportunity to get mm -hmm. them right yes. and i'll even give you a few days off if you need it how's that yes you know? how's that um, but, but again, I realize it's traumatizing when you're used to dropping your kids off at school. They're gone all day. You mm -hmm. pick them up from aftercare at six o'clock. You have them yeah. for a couple hours and you're in bed and you do that five yep. days. A week. Yep. And Dinner and bedtime. And then you see them Saturday morning. <laughs> yes. And then you've got to work and take care of these people. Right. Who are these people? I mean, it's so I know. Funny. Right. I love, teasing, I love teasing people when they say, I know. Kids are driving me crazy. I say, well, they're your kids. <laughs> this is, Cheryl, this is what I have been saying to try to encourage these because humor, thank God for humor. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for humor. And I have been trying to encourage these young moms and I'm like, these are your children. That is your daughter. That is your son. That is your child. They're your responsibility. Call me anytime and you can scream and you can cry and whatever, but I'm going to come back to you. This is your child, Jason, father of little ones. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and dad is not a babysitter. He's their no. father. Dad is not a babysitter. Your oh. father, he'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> he got this. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Gabe, are you still on? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I was, um, we're ready to go. I just wanted to wait from that. Oh, you are? You okay, I was yeah, waiting sorry. for the pictures. Sorry, I've been saying it, but I wasn't sure if it's like lost in the mix. So I'm sorry. I should have just cut in harder. Um, but yeah, we'll do that. I, I use the time to make a better interface anyway, so. All right, let's see. Let me get these guys. And actually, you guys, that'll be a good segue then when I start with Chris and talking about DC and the inauguration and stuff. That'll be a great segue for us to come over. And then we can start that and I'll do introductions for all of you guys. <clears throat> I'm in therapy, you know, for my brain injury. And yesterday they they tried to stretch my neck and ah. Uh, doesn't want to stretch. I'm 53. I'm not 23. It doesn't stretch anymore. <laughs> There's no stretching to be had. <laughs> Stretches less at 60. Oh, gosh. You're young. I'm younger than you? I know. No, Sonia is young. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're not and young, no, you're not saying, younger yeah. than me, Robert. I didn't, I no. didn't 
I was. Yeah, because I thought and both of you guys just had your 60th, right? I just had it, 60th November 2nd. Yeah, yeah. And Cheryl, didn't you just have your 60th this year? Yeah, you're older, Robert. December. Yeah, you're, you're December? Uh, <laughs> yeah, they were close, though. <laughs> All right, I'm going to need y'all to know all recipes on what y'all using to stay this uh, vibrant and uh, gorgeous, all of y'all. So I need to be looking <laughs> exquisite at 60 as well. All right, guys, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go live, and then we'll have a few minutes just where we'll do sound checks where you can share it to your, you know, to your people and all that. So then, Sonia, you just give me the cue as soon as, or maybe I'll tell you when I'm ready. Sonia. Yeah, that and sounds good. Okay, so you guys, um, on your Facebook, on your cell phone, if you guys want to open up your own uh, Facebook page on your cell phone, um, in this call, um, uh, excuse me, then you can go to um, my page or the Solmanad page on mm -hmm. Facebook, and you'll see our conversations are going to be on there live, and we'll encourage your friends to join in so that people can submit their questions or comments. And in the lower left-hand corner of our live Facebook Live interview, you can click the share button and then have that post to your timeline, and you can write whatever comments you want to say. Hey, I'm on a, a show live. Join us or, you know, whatever. So how do you make it live on our, on our own page? Um, once we go live on either my page or the Solmana page on Facebook, you'll see that. And you want to be sure to always um, refresh your screen, you know, like this here. Yeah. Make sure that you refresh your screen. But and it's then on, it's on Solmana resource, resources? No, that's for justice. It's just Solmana, S O L M I N O D. Or it's on my personal page. You can share either one. Okay. Jason, and, is your name Easterling or Jackson? I'm sorry. I might have got that wrong. Uh, Jackson, if you're going to put uh, put it up there, that'd be great. Okay. I'll do that. Jackson, if you're nasty. <laughs> you're... I am. So, yeah. so then once we go live, you'll see in the lower left-hand corner the share button with a little arrow, and that's what you click on, and then it'll give you the options, and you click on... Um, you know, for your timeline, and then you can type it in. And I do the same thing once we go live. Yeah, let's see here. So you can you can share the live thing. Yeah, once we're on live. Okay. And so, uh, Gabe, I'm ready whenever you are. If you have the music and the uh, absolutely. Do you guys know Rhonda wrote the music for um, the Solmanad music for the intro? She wrote that for me ten years ago. Isn't that great? We love us some Rhonda, don't we? <laughs> and I just, I have one name tag. I have one name tag. I'm just gonna fit or Chris's and Cheryl's, which were were there. So might as well make it look nice. And right. when I see that, uh, right as we're starting, that's usually when I go in and edit that and uh, tag them. Then. <clears throat> Is this an hour program or 30 minutes or how long? Hour. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, Cheryl, can you spell your name for me real quick? Just, I know I have it. I'm just for speed. C-H-E-R-Y-L-H-A-S-K-I-N-S. Uh -huh. I-N-S? Okay, thank you very much. I wish I could make my shot smaller, but I don't know how to make it smaller on Zoom. Yeah, do, yeah, and at this point too, this is always the hardest part with Zoom is that it's it would take me forever to get them formatted perfectly, unfortunately. So just don't change your shots as the show's on, because then I really get uh, <laughs> whatever in the in the deep stuff. So all right, we are good, but at least now people know who you are. Um, all right, so we're gonna go live. Okay. You guys know when we're officially live. Looks like they are up. Okay. I'm 
checking my phone now. hear each of the guests speak very quickly one at a time this is robert yes yes joe hello this is jason very good um it's all yours sonia whenever you're ready okay great and then chris when we're done with your segment you can just go ahead and um exit from off the screen there we are live. Good. Actually, if he can stay on and oh. mute it, <laughs> otherwise it'll reformat everything if possible. If possible. He can still not be there, but I, I can hide him then. But whatever, we'll deal with it. you on the west coast hi everybody this is sonia doswell here uh welcome to the Solmanad show with sonia we're so glad that you're here to join us today on this cold freaking frigid day in january oh my goodness hope y'all are staying warm <laughs> Well, I'm so glad that you guys are here. We have a great show for you guys today. We have another segment of Community Conversations, and I've called in a few of my friends to join us again uh, to have been uh, guests on the show previously, so I'm so glad that they're back. I'll introduce them to you in just a moment, but for right now, I just want to remind you guys that this is live, and you are all invo- invited to join the show here and be a part of this Community Conversation. So right there in the comments, please su- start to submit your comments, your questions. We're going to talk about current events, current affairs that are going on here and just have some real dialogue, some real constructive conversations. So please submit your questions, your comments, your concerns, uh, anything that you want to share at all. And uh, we'll go ahead and bring you in and uh, bring up the questions that you have. So I'm so glad that you guys are all here. Uh, I want to give a shout out to a restaurant. I uh, talk about how 
I'll be highlighting one restaurant uh, or two each show. And so the restaurant that I want to highlight today is a restaurant here in the Twin Cities. It's in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and it's called Revival. It is a great restaurant. It's downtown. Uh, you know, the the seating is limited at this time here as Governor Waltz has us in whatever phase that we're in here in Minnesota. But um, it is uh, soul food. It is Southern cooking. It is comfort food. And if there is ever a time for comfort food, is it not when it is? It's five degrees outside in January, freezing cold. <laughs> I know y'all in Seattle have some torrential rain going on, and it's, it's a dark, dreary day I heard there. I bet y'all are just probably salivating over this one, some some of the soul food yourselves. But uh, anyway, the restaurant is called Revival. We encourage you to support your local businesses, uh, order takeout once a week if you can. It just it'll hold off a little bit on the groceries and just uh, sewing into and supporting those local businesses and those local restaurants. So shout out to Revival here in the Twin Cities. Give them a call. Gabe put the information there up on the screen. Give them a call. Check out their hours. Um, ask about what's happening here in COVID with the limited seating. But of course, you can always do curbside pickup uh, or delivery if you so desire. So uh, God, be- God bless you, Revival. Thank you for that comfort food that we all need and we all enjoy. (laughs) Okay, let's go ahead and transition. You guys remember when... I had the show on here a few weeks ago, and I brought in, let's see, there was five of you guys, right, Chris? Five f- photojournalists uh, from the Twin Cities area that have been um, working tirelessly, especially in this season here with the movement after George was uh, tragically murdered right here in the Twin Cities. Um, but they are they are not new to this trade. They have been photojournalists for years. I brought them on this show. It was a very uh, interesting show. They shared a lot of their work and their experiences. So check that out. That was on a few weeks ago with the the photojournalists, but I reached out to uh, Chris June, who's joining us, um, because he was there in D.C. over the inauguration. So, Chris, welcome back to the Solmanad Show with Sonia. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so glad that you're here. We talked every day over those those five days. I know, and um, I know that it was exhausting. You covered a, a lot of miles out there. Uh, just capturing the community uh, and capturing the vibe of the city and and what was happening uh, at the time. Chris, while we're talking, our producer Gabe is going to be sharing your photographs there on the screen for our viewers to see. Um, Of course, your expectation was probably a little bit more similar to what the the Capitol uh, had experienced on January 6th, wasn't it? Yeah, we sort of expected that to be um, more violent, and um, everybody was preparing for the worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think everybody was. A look at this man blowing the shofar, or shofar, and you had said he was a former NBA basketball player, actually, wasn't he? David Wood. He mm-hmm. played from '88 to '97. Mm-hmm. Different teams. I think Milwaukee Bucks and someone else. Mm-hmm. So you had different people come out in the community and and some from other states that traveled to D.C. to express themselves in their own ways, correct? Yes. And I know when we had talked, there really wasn't any violence, which is good for the nation. I think January 6th was was enough. And this gal here had all of her dolls that she had brought. Uh, Her name's from Seattle. That's right. She was from Seattle. I forgot about that. And talk to us about, um, you know, just what you witnessed with that extravagant uh, yet necessary uh, barrier and perimeter that had been put up around the Capitol. It almost seemed like it was too many soldiers. One of the Secret Service agents even told me that he thought it was an overuse of uh, military for what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, Pretty much every street in the city around uh, for a few blocks around the Capitol and the mall had armed security and National Guard on every corner. Mm -hmm. Well, and again, after the the domestic terrorist attack with the insurrection on January 6th, um, the nation needed to be prepared. And, of course, the threats were out there, so they needed to be prepared. You never know which threats are viable and and which which ones are just trying to ramp people up or, you know, scare people. So, um, woe to be, it would be to them if, if they were not prepared. And so, you know, I commend them for bringing in all of the troops and, and every uh, group that was needed just in case. Uh, 
Did you meet any of the local residents who live there? I met people walking around the city. Most of them were just curious about what it was going to be like. Mm-hmm. So out to different barriers to see what it was like. It's kind of like a laid back um, place. A lot of people walking dogs, having conversations mm-hmm. on the street. There was people, mm-hmm. what was nice is there wasn't that like conflict that you see leading up to the election. It was yeah. nice conversations about um, politics. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, some voted for Trump, some voted for Biden. Mm-hmm. We got along. Mm-hmm. It was nice to see that um, that calm that we missed from the elections. Yeah. Yeah, it was like for a moment as a as a group there in the community, um, sanity prevailed on that day <laughs> and returned. <laughs> Even at Black Lives Matter um, Square, everybody's mm-hmm. pretty um, laid back and people that were opposing political views seemed to get along. And so what is this photo here? Now it looks like we're getting some in the evening. Yeah, that's around the Capitol. Mm-hmm. So those lights were, I think, to uh, commemorate the 50 states, mm-hmm. each territory. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if they lighted each inauguration. But, and the uh, next one, Gabe? Looks like you're about 500 yards out from the Capitol. Would that be an accurate, accurate assessment? I think so. Mm-hmm. And who's in the tents? I think homeless people. Mm-hmm. And you approached uh, several of these um, men and women uh, there in uh, both with the Capitol Police and with the National Guard and spoke with them, didn't you? I did. And what was their take on the day? They were happy that like they could be there to protect it, but mm-hmm. I think they were really bored. Pretty and much- this is this is Trump making his exit, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's when he flew yeah. right over the uh, Black Lives Matter Square. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I watched. Uh, I watched his his send off there. Um, live, it was it was pretty brief, um, you know. But uh, I was impressed that President Biden uh, was respectful enough to to not surface, uh, not to go out and head over to church until uh, former President Trump had made his exit. I thought that that just showed a lot of class mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, respect, which is you know what our nation needs. So you had folks out from all different sides, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But overall, it was a calm experience. You were there for about four days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is them bringing in the busloads of the National Guard? Yeah, that was during the inauguration day. So mm-hmm. while the inauguration was happening, they were still bringing in busloads of National Guard. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, aging area for a war. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, again, thank God it wasn't because that's this. This was what was best for the nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad that you were there and that that you got a lot of pictures, um, and that you were safe, uh, and all went well. Um, I thank you for coming back on the show and uh, sharing these pictures with our viewers. And a lot of people were interested and curious about, about what was happening there. Um, of course, we had uh, national media that was covering everything, but, but just to have um, you right there on the inside, getting all these pictures and talking with all of the different individuals. Um, uh, we appreciate you taking the time to come on here, Chris, and I thank you for your work. Uh, you have a great eye. You're very talented and keep up the good work and, and you stay safe. I look forward to having you back on the social Monad show with Sonia again another time. Thank you, Sonia. Okay, thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you. So this is actually just a perfect segue. Um, we have a, a panel discussion <clears throat> that we're going to be having now here in the next segment, and this is uh, what I've been calling community conversations. Um, 
and I have brought some friends on the show. We have uh, Jason Jackson with us with Best uh, Podcast. Uh, Jason from the Twin Cities area. Thank you so much for uh, joining us here on the Soul Monod Show with Sonia. Uh, we have um, my dear friend of goodness, Rob, 25 years. Yeah, at least. Seems like. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Robert Richardelli here from the Seattle area. Rob has been a guest on the Solmonad Show with Sonia um, uh, over the years. You know, this is our 10th anniversary, and Rob has been a guest on the show before and a faithful friend with a great mind, and I asked him to join the panel today as we discuss different issues here throughout our time and then we have my dear friend uh, Cheryl Haskins Cheryl from the Seattle area thank you so much for being here today Cheryl has also been on the show in the past uh, she authored a book uh, girlfriends don't matter great show you guys should check it out you can see it there on the website at solmanad.com and on our YouTube channel as well so check that out it's a very good book uh, I picked up I don't know six or eight ten copies and uh, freely pass them out to my single girlfriends that are of a certain age. (laughs) So Cheryl Haskins, thank you so much for uh, joining us here on the show today once again. My pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah, glad you guys are here. And I see Jason is home with his babies. Look at daddy that does the hair too. See, that's my kind of daddy right there. (laughs) Yeah, Vernon learned real quick. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> how to do Simone's hair. Okay, you guys. Well, let's go ahead and transition. This is called Community Conversations because we are all in community here together, even though we're scattered across the United States. And I just want us to talk about um, several different subjects. Um, looking here at, sorry, my screen. I need to get that off. Uh, let's move that over. Okay, there. All right. So there you guys saw the photos. And of course, you've already heard in the press that um, that the boogeyman did not come out um, on Inauguration Day. And oh, what a day it was indeed. I did a special show last week. We talked all about it last week. Um, of course, it was beautiful um, and very encouraging and um, professional, um, hopeful and, and, and patriotic. Um, and that day was, was very calm, uh, throughout DC, but, uh, you know, we're just coming off of a difficult time, uh, for so many different reasons, um, you know, with the racial injustices and, um, that really came to the foreground, of course, after, um, George Floyd was tragically murdered here in the Twin Cities. Um, uh, Cheryl, I'll start with you there in your area. You're in the South Seattle. I know Rob's up there in the Northeast area. Uh, how's the community there um, been coping in these last nine months, eight months uh, with all that's been going down? It's It's been real interesting. I mean, right where I live locally, there's been a lot of activism that I mm-hmm. think is, is really good and positive. Um, um, neighborhood groups started up, you know, via Facebook and um, Neighborhood Watch, you know, just to have conversations. And, and I think it's been, I guess, encouraging in the midst of all the other, I call it foolishness, that's going on in our society, mm-hmm. is right. that um, people, white people in the community are are standing up and saying, you know, this isn't right. That isn't right. And, mm-hmm. you know, for, for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks on end, we, on our main intersections where I live, we had people standing up, white people standing with signs saying black lives matter. Um, you know, we don't like this, you know, this is not our country, etc. which mm-hmm. was kind of cool to watch. Um, Cause sure. that's actually who should be doing something because uh, sure. we've been working at it for a very long time as people of color and, and progress isn't made. Um, in this country without everyone participating. So um, at the same time, you know, there's a lot of, you know, people that are suffering, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, I live right around the corner from a Catholic church that has a food bank and I see cars lined up there once a week, just all the way wrapped around, you know, Mm -hmm. where you, where you, as far as the eye can see. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a combination. Um, There are people that are winning in this situation and there are people that are losing in this mm-hmm. situation so yes you know it's, it's all of it mm-hmm. 
it's yeah. all of it. How about Rob, uh, where you're at up there in the Northeast and um, as it pertains to uh, this, this movement, this, this, this awakening uh, to Cheryl's point, um, you know, folks been fighting for 402 years just to come up with a random number. Uh, yeah. So there's been an awakening and um, some folks are coming forward. They're opening their mouths and their eyes are, are opened or they are opening, um, you know, so as it pertains to the movement, how's it been in your community? Yeah, we've seen, um, you know, neighbors have BLM signs on their, on, in their windows. Um, we've had, um, haven't seen a lot of things in the streets around here up in the Northeast, you know, Bothell, Kirkland area, mm-hmm. but uh, recently. And, um, I think, I think for the most part, um, the, those that are awakened, have become more awakened and those that were uh, that have been asleep are still kind of sleeping <laughs> unfortunately um some of the people deep I've talked slumber to, yeah deep slumber um and you know and it really has been become politicized um some of them may have hints of racism from their past or or whatever some of it um it's really not there but the political stance makes it so Mm-hmm. Because they they're sticking to their guns and the massive group group think that they're a part of, mm-hmm. and they won't listen to other groups because they're already they're stuck into their group, and they hear the same sermon, the same um, media, and you know, to look at other media, but they 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 have their their views of that and won't won't even pay attention to other voices. So. It's, I see some awakening. I see some shifting, which is good. Um, I see that. And so I'm very hopeful of 2021 um, for our state. I see some business that have been really hit hard. Of course, restaurant businesses, but my family's businesses, Vince's Italian restaurants. Um, um, says my internet's unstable. Did I, did I freeze a little bit there? No, you're fine. Just Am I still alive? Okay. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Yeah, they, they have Vince's restaurant, Pizzeria Puccinos. They they do a lot to go business, so they're doing fine. Um, Cheryl, your your one of your sons uh, works with one of my friends, Altig Corporation, and um, they're thriving. They re, re, re reinvented themselves and their business model. I think they've grown forty percent uh, during this two two thousand twenties. Just ridiculous, um, having to pivot quickly in their model. So. So those businesses are thriving. These businesses have been shut down, which is sad. Um, some of my friends in the health club industry have been hurting for, for, for their businesses. But yeah, overall, I think with uh, the direction, uh, finally having leadership uh, in, in, at the, in Washington uh, versus what we had the last four years, I'm very, very hopeful going into this year. Right. Yeah, and I do want us to talk a little bit about um, that hard stance and communication uh, with folks believing, you know, a certain way. I actually want us to touch uh, more on that uh, just a little bit. Jason, how about in your community? You are in the uh, the, the south of the Twin Cities here. Um, what, what, what's your take? And, and you're you're a little bit younger than the rest of us on the panel. <laughs> <laughs> what's your take with 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 you and you and your folks, all you you young parents out there? You know, uh, I think you guys made a, a great statement. So first and foremost, what up, though? I appreciate you allowing me on your platform. Thank you so uh, much it, for being uh, here. It's a blessing to to be able to have something like this to, you know, get your views across and your point and, and see what and see if others share the same alike. Um, yeah. What I'm starting to see is, is and you guys spoke on it, is like a great reveal. It's awakening for most. It could be a slumber for a lot, but it's also the recognition of what's real, what's happening. Mm -hmm. And if you aren't covered uh, or if you aren't have a source of belief, you will be stuck in this world and you will be sacrificial. Uh, I'm sorry to say it that way and sorry to be so blunt. But um, what I'm starting to see is a lot of people are are breaking. They've made it to a point um, where... The injustice was 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 one thing. They, and their eyes are open to like, wow, that's crazy. I'm sorry that it's been happening to you for 400 years and, and this and that. And then they realize that it's not. COVID came and they said, okay, well, huh, let, me, 
let me show you that it's just not black people that's been, you know, let, let, let's show you how I really feel. And, and right. COVID really buckled some people and, and it put them in the perspective of that <clears throat> they didn't know that their rights have been infringed on for years, uh, decades. So, you know, I think a lot of people, including myself, are starting to wake up to independency and learning how to be independent and learning how to be free. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, you know, it may spark some stuff when people listen or hear this and say, what does it mean? I'm free. Eh, I mean, Are you, you know, I, that's, that's the question, right? So it's, it's learning how to how to be uh, independent, free, and, and really develop on your own and start to bring in the structure for your little ones. I have lived my life. I'm, I'm not saying that it's over by any means because I would love to be well off in my 60s or, you know, approaching that that age like you beautiful people. Uh, but I, I want to start enriching, if I said that correctly, excuse me if I, if I didn't, but passing it on to my children and giving them a better uh, understanding of what life can and will be for them and not making it a dream and a hope like it was for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was younger at their age or even in the teenage life, uh, I was fed hopes and dreams that you will be a one percenter. I'm not saying that I won't ever get to that point, but realistically speaking, I want to just be an impact. I don't want to be a one percenter. So teaching my children how to be an impact instead of shooting for the stars is, is what I think is the next step. So to kind of like give a, a conclusion to what you were asking, how the community is looking, I see I see hurt people, I see broken mm-hmm. people, I mm-hmm. see some strong people, I see some extravagant people that looked broken, that looked like they weren't going to make it, and, and in turn um, was blessed and covered to be some of the strongest people to lean on. So mm-hmm. it's, been, it's been something uh, beautiful and amazing by far. Um, I wish and hope that uh, the the love and connectivity that is needed uh, comes a lot sooner than later because mm-hmm. of uh, where the world is turning and how government and laws and all that other jazz is starting to play out. We're going to need a lot more love than what's out there right now mm-hmm. and for, in, in order for us to be... Um, free or or just be alive and right. live life a lot of us aren't living life and i had to have a, a a great reset for myself through trials and tribulations before this uh happened for me to understand what living is actually like because before we hopped on and i'm sorry if i'm taking up but before we hopped okay. on um Charles said something to the effect of a lot of younger parents that are in my age bracket, a lot of younger parents looked at the system to uh, parental guidance for their children, right? You know, we're all working, trying to live that American dream and, and have the house and have the cars and have the yard and have the this. And uh, our children was being taken care of by others, you know? And then when right. this great reset has happened it forced a lot of us to pay attention to what's home and really connect and dive in um luckily enough uh, uh my higher power uh set me down a year beforehand and gave me the patience and virtue and the understanding of what my path is and what i'm actually built for mm-hmm. and, and got me ready for this so it, it's, it's definitely something that isn't for the week so being a parent full-time having a job and and really juggling all those different things, you need a a village to lean on. You need resources to depend on. Um, I think learning and and really working with uh, therapists and people that can, can really sharpen and give you the tools is important. So once again, it goes back to being able to be there for your children and give them the tools that's necessary for them when they're older. Mm-hmm. Sorry for my soapbox. <laughs> no, no, that's all right. No, th- that's good. And you know, you touched on so many different points with uh, you know the fact that people are 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 hurting, people are in pain, um, they're confused, they're fearful. Um, some are just rocked. Um, I'm so grateful that has not been 
our experience for me and my family um just we are just solidly rooted and anchored you know and um and so that does not it has not affected us the same way, but that is not to say that I, I cannot and do not have compassion for mm-hmm. the majority of America who is. Cheryl, you want to touch on that a little bit? Because uh, we talked about that before the show. Yeah, I think it's been, uh, you know, I just want to say this, everyone towards the end of 2020, starting basically in September, October, oh, we only have so many days left in 2020. Oh, now it's only 30 days left in 2020, as if. As There's going to be a big difference between December 31st and January 1st. That and one day so difference, no. It, it was like a setup almost for even more disappointment and more pain because mm-hmm. everyone was trying to roll out a 2020, let's get this over with and get into 2021, only to find on New Year's Day it was exactly like it was the day before. And, uh, <laughs> and I think that, you know, it really challenges us to, to you know, take a look at what's really happening and, and and there has been a lot happening in everyone's personal life. I, I've had many conversations over the year, this past year with my, my adult children and my daughter even said to me, she goes, mom, I, I have loved 2020 because I've had to look in my own mirror yeah, and decide yeah. if I like what I see and the things mm-hmm. that I don't like, I've had to do something about. There's no That's excuses. Right. I'm working at my house. I can't right. blame nobody, you That's know? Right. And then all the time we've been begging for, right, to spend more time with our families. You know, I spent yeah. I spent four to four and a half hours a day commuting, you know, between going to work and coming home. And now I have that time back, you know, so where's my excuse for not working out? Sorry. But anyway, you know, it's like, you know, we have all of this, these different things that have been thrown into our plate. And I was saying before we started the call, I really think there's been you know, a a, a sorting out of the sheep and the goats. And so no no matter where you sit spiritually, you know, I think you can relate to that analogy that, or, or the, or the wheat in the shaft, that's another way of looking at it, right? Where, you know, we're not supposed to decide who's, who's good or who's bad, but just let things kind of sort themselves out. Right. Mm -hmm. And that sorting is happening in, in our lives on so many different levels. And that creates, I think, a level of, of stress that we're not accustomed to. And, um, and my concern really has been not just in my own life, um, but and the people I know, but is how are we how are we dealing with this? How are yes. we coping? What are we doing different, right? To right. absorb all of this over information overload that mm-hmm. we're getting. Cause you know, you're home, what do you have? You have your TV on 24 hours a day. Most people are, you know, are doing that and they're watching this play by play of everything that's going on in the world, mm-hmm. which we haven't wouldn't normally be doing. Even I have teenagers in my house, right? Not mine, thank God, but grandkids. (laughs) And they're asking questions they never even thought about before because they never were at home. You know, they were at school. And Mm -hmm. so um, I really believe we're we're at an opportune time to really reset, to press the reset button in Mm -hmm. our lives and and to really decide what's important and what isn't important. And I think this is really, this last year has been, a, you know, an opportunity for that. I know many have suffered and I think we have to recognize all that's happened in 2020. Mm-hmm. That it may not be my experience. I didn't lose my job, but there's people who did. Sure. And, right. and recognizing that the way they're looking at life is totally different the way I'm looking at life. Right. But on the other hand, you know, when you're with yourself 24 seven and you're used to doing certain things for a break or a stress relief and you can't do that, then you're facing some things that you haven't faced in a mm-hmm. while. Yeah, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, so I think there's a lot simultaneously happening that's putting pressure points on our lives and our community that we we haven't experienced before. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I know something else that we were talking about, um, and to your point, Cheryl, is Rob. We were talking about how uh, this has been such a revealing season, and people that we have loved and admired and respected sometimes for decades. All of a sudden, this nasty, dark, ugly um, ideology, um, feeling, opinion surfaces, and we've all just been stunned. Uh, has, uh, Rob, share a little bit of your your take on that, how this has just been so revealing, going through so much, yet we see what has come out. Well, I've never um, great reveal um was a great deception um, for me. I mean, I've never seen 
so many smart people that I've respected and honored that, that who I, I thought would normally do at least a little bit of research um, instead of sticking to their opinions and, and their massive group think. But um, um, it's been a, a kind of sad in some ways. Um, I don't, yes. I don't post a lot of uh, political stuff on my Facebook or, but occasionally I, I would get on a rant and I did get on a rant when our president um, um, had the, the military move those peaceful protesters with yes. gas and they, they tromp, trampled on folks. Yes. One of my friend's daughters got injured over there. She's going to um, George, uh, Washington, uh, is it George Washington? Uh, George Washington University. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, and um, I was angry to see this guy who doesn't even know how to hold a Bible. Did you freeze up on us, Rob? Yeah. He's frozen. Um, so, season, not just, just not just uh, the last couple of years, but really for four years. So, it's been a long time. Uh, and then even today, people are texting me saying, you watch uh, President Trump will regain his, uh, his proper uh, standing. Mm. You know, where where are they getting this information? I don't. I just it's on to me. It's the most. I mean, you know, things that we used to talk about in the church, or we used to talk about growing up about deception. And we, I used to think, how could somebody ever be somebody who has a basic knowledge of faith of the Bible of God of this loving God? How could somebody be so deceived? Right. And, I mean, I never. I never. This what I've seen in the last four years is something I never thought I'd ever see in my lifetime. No, I know it's been stunning, but remember, he says even the elect shall be deceived, and the elect that those are our leaders. These are these are the the well studied, the the well informed, the well educated. These are you know seasoned leaders. That's who the elect are, and that's that's exactly the season that we're in. And it has been very very painful. Um, to have these conversations and sometimes it's just observing uh, what somebody is is writing or saying um, and they're so far off from from center you know it's it's my hope and belief that most of America sits at about you know that I would like to say that 70 percent ish in the middle you know that that 40 50 60 percent pretty much at at the middle and over these last four years you know those those intelligent and those wise individuals who have been lost some are coming back towards center which is who they were and who they've been this whole time um you know so i'm i'm hopeful and we have to hold on to hope but it has been um quite frankly disturbing um the conspiracy theories that people are embracing and running with are dangerous and reckless and it's just been stunning i know cheryl you've you've alluded to that before and you mentioned that what is that your experience been with that i i guess i can echo uh robert um as well as that i've had some some friendships that i i have been literally stunned um mm-hmm. just by how i never would have viewed these people as entrenched or not open having closed minds, I would never have described people that way, you know, that I've known for a long, long time. But when it, when it came down to this last year, mm-hmm. it's like something locked in. And I, you know, with the risk of being sp- overly spiritual, it's like a spiritual, like, like bl- blindness just took over and, and yeah, you can't even much. have a, a, a conversation. You can't even di- agree to mm-hmm. disagree. It's almost like, I don't want to hear anything you have to say. Don't speak to me. You know, I don't want to talk to you. And no, it's, it's, it's frightening, you know, that, that people could get to that, that place. And I think, you know, no matter where you land politically, when your mind is closed to where you don't want to hear anything, anybody else has to say, you have to check yourself. Yes. You just have to check yourself because you're setting yourself up for deception at that point. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. And because no one is 100% right, something my, my dad used to say all the time is that, you know, you can't believe, you know, most of what you hear, half of what you read, <laughs> you know, and if you're only reading one thing and listening to certain people, you are on your way to deception, <laughs> for sure. Yes. And, um, and I think a lot of people got caught up, you know, and really, you know, I've never, I wasn't raised to be like a follower. So if all the sheep are going one direction, my dad said, you probably should go the other direction, right. you know? And so I guess that's what the military does for you, <laughs> being raised by a, a sergeant major. But yeah. um, um, I just wasn't taught to think. I was taught to think. I guess that, that's yes. the, the main thing. Independent think thinker. So yeah. many, even smart people stop thinking in 2020 mm -hmm. and before mm -hmm. that actually yeah yeah um yeah. And, and it's for that but i'm i'm hopeful you know i'm hopeful mm -hmm. i i believe that you know we all can recover from from 2020 or whatever happened in 2020 we all can recover we all can yeah. decide the kind of life we want to live and i think that all the events that we've had put before us we can make decisions to be a part of the solution mm -hmm. or we can be continue to be a part of the problem because mm -hmm. there's you know there's no in between you no. know you're maintaining what is and what is isn't working then you're a part of the right problem. right and that's something that we always say here at soul Monad is you know god gives each and every one of us free will whoever we are where we are what we believe you know whether we're a person of faith or not we all have free will every day to make the choices that we make and nobody's being forced into anything. Right. Nobody's arm is being twisted. I mean, people can try to manipulate and people can bully. But what we choose to do and say each day is our own choice. And I'm hopeful and trusting that people will begin to make the right decisions. Um, I feel like, and I know in your podcast, Jason, you know, it's your podcast best is so much positivity that's being put out there. But you guys, I just, I feel like, you know, the adults are back in the White House and, you know, which is not to say that I do or I am going to believing in everything that, that that they're doing and every decision that's going to be made. I haven't with any presidency in, in my lifetime. I mean, in fact, I have voted on, on both sides. Probably too much information. Nobody needs to know that. But I'm not pro-party. I'm pro-issues. And I have my views, my opinions, um, my expectations for what I want for myself, my family, and my country. And and I am an individual thinker, and I will a free thinker, and I will think for myself. Um, but I feel like the nation is going to move forward, and there is uh, more unity that is going to take place as scales are removed from eyes and as people can um, have clarity of their minds again. Uh, we are moving forward. And to Jason, to your point earlier, you know, you don't want to miss out. You don't want to be left behind because we do need to move forward. And I feel like we are going to move forward. I wanted to talk about um, tools in moving forward. Um, we just had a show a couple of weeks ago on COVID and caring for yourself at home. I had my girlfriend Keisha on from Dallas, who is in the middle of, of battling COVID. Um, I've lost friends uh, to COVID. I personally have known about 150 people. Well, 56, 57, 52, 53 people <laughs> um, now. Anyway, who have had it, uh, we have not. Um, but it's out there. It is real. Uh, and so before we go forward into tools, can we just talk a little bit about the reality of COVID? Um Rob, I know you've had experience with that um, in your family. Jason, I know you have in your family. And Cheryl, even you as well in your family. Um, Rob, go ahead. What is your take on this on this COVID and just the reality of it? Yeah, I discussed my friend from Australia has less than 100 cases, I think, right now. Um, they didn't get politicized. They came as one against the, the, the sickness and they allowed, they trusted the government enough to make the decisions. And so they didn't look at their freedoms taken away. So mm -hmm. we become so polarized and politicized because of the previous administration who called everything fake that he didn't agree with and playing to a certain party. Um, I think that is what caused such an outbreak in our country. 
because if we just did simple things, um, I'll send you guys a list of the things they did. She, she said, I can't do it on, on a phone. I'll, I'll email you so I can get more detail of what we did as a country. And it's it, the things that we talked about in our state and we just never implemented them. Right. Um, and mainly is because there's people that said, I'm not doing them. They're taking my freedom away. They're going to come to my house. They're going to, they fear things that are going to happen that aren't even happened yet. You mm. know? So I think, so there's, so as far as tools are going towards Joyce and I experienced COVID. Um, we were fortunate because we got through it. There's a company out of Woodenville who somebody, a uh, Christian guy that started this company years ago, about eight years ago, they're waiting for FDA approval, but they do have FDA approval for their solution as a cleaner. It kills COVID. So many of the people there, and they've sent it to 40 countries, you can breathe this stuff in um, through a vaporizer or a nebulizer, and uh, mm-hmm. it kills everything in your throat and your nasal passages, your lungs, but doesn't hurt you. It's, it's a hypochlorous acid that mm. doesn't, it's what our white blood cells produce. So when we got COVID, immediately I went back to the stuff that I'd used in March and April. Every time I'd go out, I'd spray the stuff. Um, I went back to it, got ordered some more. And I don't know, if, I can't say it helped or not, other than the fact that we never got in our lungs. Mm-hmm. We had mild fever. We had lost our taste and our smell. Mm-hmm. And we, uh, we had body aches and, and it endured about 10 days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing. It's called, it's called uh, BrioTech. BrioTech, B-R-I-O-T-E-C-H-U-S-A uh, dot com. Mm-hmm. And they're right here in Woodville. And they're mm-hmm. I've talked to their doctors several times. I've helped some COVID patients that were in the hospitalized um, as well. So, so that's one of the tools that to look at. But um, um, I think the biggest thing is we have to, at some level, it was hard to trust the previous administration. I understand that for, for many, but with where this new administration is going with um, their, their over the top ability to be transparent. Fauci is like a new man because he's free yeah. to express the science. I think we have an opportunity, hopefully, to do what they're telling us to do. And all of us as Americans decide to do it and not decide to not do it because, hey, uh, I, I don't I don't like those guys. So I'm going to be a rebel. Mm-hmm. So I think with the vaccinations and everything else, I, I'm hopeful that we're going to get there. But uh, we've we've lost a lot of loving and wonderful people because of ignorance and defiance. Yeah, and this whole movement, um, you know, where they have the masks and the T-shirts and they're, they're, the signs are holding up and it, it says um, a faith over fear. And I keep saying here on Solmanad, how about faith and wisdom? Uh, science is real, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, I am, I'm, not a, I'm not a doctor and, um, you know, many others in the former administration were not. Can we just let the experts be the experts and advise us and counsel us within their field? Um, you know, that's, that's definitely what we need. Uh, Jason, what was your experience uh, with that and your take on on COVID with folks that just are not tracking uh, and following and believing that it truly is a, a global pandemic? It shall pass, but it is a global global pandemic, not the flu. Gotcha. Uh, you know, it, it's, it is real. You're right. I, I, I thoroughly believe it. My wife, she's a frontliner for geriatrics so she is in the mm-hmm. nursing homes mm-hmm. uh, she's an RN at uh, one of the nursing homes here in the uh, Twin Cities area and she contracted uh, COVID um, mm-hmm. luckily enough or ho- like luckily enough it was on the milder end she, she pretty much had it what everyone else had was body aches uh, fever um, I didn't contract it but I think I did I tested twice came back negative but I had mm-hmm. uh loss of taste and smell for oh. about a week or so. So mm. it, it was it's kind of hard to say, you know, did I take the test too early? Did I take it too yeah. late? I, I don't know, but it came back uh, a negative. Mm-hmm. But we're, we're just blessed to say that on the lighter end of it, it we, we weren't harmed, right? Our children were are, are fine. The people in our family were fine. The ones around us. Um, it's, it's tough. Um, because it's a it's it's a virus, right? So it's it's really hard to combat 
period. I mean, if, if they found a way to do it, they would have found a way to do it with the flu as well, right? So mm-hmm. I'm no scientist. I'm no no nothing. I'm just Jason, uh, a <laughs> stay-at-home father that knows a little bit about life, right? Uh, but what I do know is, is, is our bodies are the most magnificent thing besides this earth, and that's what we're from. Uh, that I've ever seen in this world. So if we, if we manage to take care of that properly, there's a lot of things that we, we pretty much don't need and, and and our bodies could work on itself. I'm not saying that we're, I, mean, I, I think we're super, we were superheroes. We're, I think we all are. Our, our bodies do phenomenal things that when your mind is, is in the right place and, and you're doing everything that you should and you're less stressed in your life and, and you're, you know, praying, meditate, all of those things, it, it can do wonders, right? I've, I've heard stories of someone having the worst cancer in the world and they were supposed to die next week and they're still here five, 10 years later. Mm-hmm. So that, that's that. those type of things make statements. When people decide to live, things change. Um, when we're stuck in the house and when we're stuck listening to, uh, the numbers are, are getting higher. 30,000 people will die next week. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Like, how do you know that? Like, it, you know, but I get it, you can skew numbers, but how are you deciding that people are going to die next week? Like, that, that to me blows my mind. So at that point, when I heard something of that nature, and excuse me if I exaggerated the numbers, but once I heard that, I stopped listening. And I said, I want to decide to live. I'm going to do it safe enough, right? I'm, right. you know, I'm a comply-ish. I'm going to wear my mask because I know it's out there. I know it's a real thing. I've, I've done my research and, and, I, and I get it. Um, but also, I, I don't want to lose my life, not necessarily saying that I, you know, do something ridiculous, but I don't want to stop living it, right? I've had uh, the pleasure of talking to my grandmother, who's 90, uh, my other grandmother, which is around her 86, she's had her 86th birthday. And they're, and they're both like, you know what? I, I, I don't care anymore. Bring my grandchildren over here. I want to see them. I, I want to live life now. If I'm going to live it on my last few terms, let, allow me to do it how I choose to. Maybe it's their yeah, antiquated I think, thinking. Well, I think or, there is COVID fatigue. I, I think a lot of, yeah, I think a lot of people are, are fatiguing. Um, but, you know, we are still in the midst of this pandemic. And, you know, one of our slogans here at Solmanat is together we can, together we will. And it's, it's just so important that we continue to press in, pull together, encourage one another. Uh, Cheryl, I know you're a, you're a champion for life. Uh, you're a life coach. And you're speaking into lives, especially to so many women there in the Seattle area. Um, we want to encourage our viewers as well. We know that people are battling uh, depression, discouragement, um, COVID fatigue. Um, they're just, you know, people keep saying, I'm over it. I'm just done. I'm over it. You know, um, but we want to encourage people. We want to encourage our viewers. Um, why don't you uh, start us with that and, and share uh, some encouraging words for our viewers today who are fatigued and despondent and desperate and, and they're hurting. I can say I'm right. I'm with you in that regard. Um, yeah. I posted a picture on my social media today that was I took two years ago in Cancun and said, wish I was there. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Just because, um, you know, I've been home. I've been local for longer than I've been in quite some time, you know, Mm -hmm. in terms of not traveling, not going anywhere. And I think the biggest thing I could say to help you is learn to separate the issues, you know. So that you can focus on what you actually have control over. Um, I appreciate, Jason, what you were sharing about um, just your approach to COVID COVID fatigue and and how your family dynamic is working with that, you know, and being respectful of other people's choices. Um, For instance, um, my mom. She's not going nowhere. I can't even get her to see my house right now. And I, I, Mm -hmm. and rather than harass her about that. I okay, mom. I understand. So I take pictures on my phone, and then when I go see her, I say, "See, this is what I did here, and this is what I did in my sewing room, and this is what I did in the kitchen," and accommodate that. I'm trying to get her up and running on an iPad so we can Facetime. She can Facetime with other other people. My mom's 94, and she believes that she needs to do what she needs to do. Mm-hmm. And I so I think that we have to 
um, be respectful of that. I have two grandsons that leave and work every day, and I give them instructions as to if they're not going to wear masks where you work, it might work for you, but it doesn't work for you coming home to me. So no, that's it's right. You to, to you know figure that out. And of course, they yeah. do because restaurants that are staying open, they have guidelines they have to follow. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have other people in my life who think it's a hoax and only wear a mask if they are forced into it and go travel the country and do whatever they want to do that are, you know, and I just have to say, okay, when you come into my space, though, I need you to wash your hands. I need you to put on a mask. I need you to sit yeah. over there and be, let's be respectful. So I think you have to put things, um, separate the issues and be respectful of your loved mm-hmm. ones and the community at large. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also think uh, during this time, especially since nothing changed between December 31st and January 1st, mm-hmm. is that we have to be intentional about our decisions. Mm-hmm. We can't ride, you know, hoping something's going to change or something's going to get better on its own. We have to keep living our lives to your point, Jason, like, okay, it's a new year. What do I normally do at the beginning of the year? You know, what do I, you know, what what do I want to have accomplished by the end of the year? And we have to keep moving forward and be really, really intentional. Um, and I think more important than anything right now is, is take care of ourselves emotionally, yeah. mentally, spiritually, yes. physically. Yes. Um, there's, there's a whole lot of new businesses cropping up, you know, right during this time of, you know, I'll prepare meals, I'll do this, I'll do that, because people are at home, they're not used to cooking three, four meals, three meals a day, like back in the old days, yeah. us people in our, our generation, <laughs> you know what it's like to cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they don't know nothing about right. that, you right. know, um, <laughs> and you know, so there's all these businesses pro- cropping up, and so we have to, you know, think about how am I taking care of my body? How am I taking care of my spiritual life? How am I taking yeah. care of my my emotions? Because our emotions and mental well being are so so important, especially now. Mm-hmm. Um, to, you know, kids that aren't in school, they're not experiencing the normal interactions that they were used to, and so how are we, as their parents or guardians or whoever, helping them to process through that? And um, and I think being creative, be creative. I mean, yeah. you haven't had time probably up to now to actually think creatively and mm-hmm. if you're a spiritual person like i am i said god give me a, a great idea give me something that i i wouldn't have been able to do if i weren't in this situation right now mm-hmm. and you know i guess i'm an internal optimist as my dad just tell me all the time yeah. is that yep. you know find the good in the dramatic yeah. trauma you know yeah. flourish in the crisis you mm-hmm. know find when this is all over i'm gonna have some show for this and it's not gonna be bad you know right. having that kind of a a attitude and and i know that it Mm -hmm. takes it takes steps to get there but you can get there and you and it really is just a decision i'm not letting covid i'm not letting politicians that don't even know my name exactly whether they're out of office or in office okay don't even know my name decide my future decide Mm -hmm. how i'm going to feel about me decide how i'm going to feel about my family and about my life Mm -hmm. i'm going to choose i'm deciding that that's right i'm deciding yeah, you have free will. And I, I love what you said there, Cheryl. You know, soul monad stands for soul, mind, and body. And it's about a finding health um, and balance within the soul, mind, and body. And if there's ever been a time to focus on every area, the time is now. It certainly could be easy to be completely taken uh, taken aback, to be overwhelmed, and, and to be discouraged. There's, you know, there's it's coming at us all day, every day. Um, but I love what you said and it is so important that we feed our soul you know what is it that feeds your soul what is it that is feeding your spirit and and to stay active in in whatever way you can within your home or in your neighborhood you know wherever you live whatever the 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 rules are there within your state um and your mind you know like marshawn had said you know take care of your mentals Take care of your mentals. We have to take care of our our mind uh, so that we can still be able to live our best life, even, you know, within these parameters and within these limitations. Um, shout out to Jason's podcast, Best, right? And Rob, I know you have opinions about that. You're an encourager as well. You know, what, what would you like to share with folks uh, that are out there just sitting at home again? <laughs> on day number whatever this is 300 or whatever um who who are frustrated and and struggling i would say uh first of all faith is a huge factor because 
um, and looking at everything as a season. So every season is we sometimes project a season that isn't even here or yeah. think this season is not going to change. Well, that's why they call it a season because it changes. Right. So my encouragement is to realize this is a season. It's a long season, um, but it's going to change while you're in this season be productive. Like Cheryl said, um, mm -hmm. what is something that God can give you? What do you invention? Um, it turns out her son was the one that came up with the technology to, to really save and, and impact um, their, their company my friend's company. Mm -hmm. that he worked for. Um, so um, what is it? What can you do? You know, there's a lot of things I wanted to do during some of the downtime I had. Didn't get to all of them, but I got to some of them. Mm -hmm. So, so don't, don't put too much stress on yourself understand that you could be fatigued it's okay to be disillusioned it's at some level it's okay to be down a little bit all of us have moments of that but you're still breathing and yeah. there's a season so start preparing the way for the next season because there is going to yeah. be a season and go into it with a positive outlook it's going to be helpful so that's mm -hmm. that's my my two cents yeah. Yeah. I, I keep saying to people, you know, see the beauty that's all around you. See it because it's there. It's never left. Yeah. And what, like Cheryl said, the family um, connections and ability to see family in a closer way for those that can do that. Like grandma and my dad, it's hard to do that. But um, but there's a lot of treasure within the, this season that yeah. we may be missing or not paying attention to. And that's very, very thing, something else to consider. Yeah, I, th I think it's just, there's so many blessings that have been in this season. I had Rhonda on a couple of weeks ago, and that's what we were talking about is, is glean the good. There's so much good that's come out of it. And also perspective, you know, what is your perspective? And if we can just uh, step out of ourselves and this this seemingly dark season step out for just a moment and take another look back through a different lens and see the blessings we have our two adult sons living back at home with us so it's myself in three big grown men like mama is cooking a lot <laughs> and I, I i yearn for my sisterhood you know but how blessed am i to have this time so much time with my husband who would normally with the commute and his date would normally be gone, you know, 10, 12 hours a day with the commute time. And then my sons who wouldn't even normally be living here. So that's, that's a blessing. And the flowers are still blooming. The grass is still growing and the sun is still rising and we still have beautiful relationships to value, to sow into and to nurture. Amen. Yeah. Jason, I see you there with your little one that just came up from, from their nap. <laughs> How you doing, brother? Talk about family time. He's in it. Y'all remember those days? <laughs> so this is this is the youngest. This is Margo. Uh, she is a victim, not a victim, but she's a one of the, the new babies that are going to be able to speak about and know about COVID. And I can go anywhere for the first portion of my life and those type of things, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, now, we, we talk change and we talk, you know, all the things that we're encountering and you speak on, on all the cooking. Like my life, I went from being a, a, um, a corporate trainer and, you know, a pretty nice, decent job. I loved what I, I, I should say, I liked what I did. I didn't love it. I liked what I did, and then life and, and um, repercussions and consequences uh, happened in my life that switched me to being at home more, and then COVID hit as well. So it trained me for the last two years of my life to be a stay-at-home father. So mm -hmm. while mom is at home frontline working, I take care of everything here. So yes, in retrospect of learning new things and, and really diving in and being a, hold on one baby, hold on mama. And then being a, a a new teacher, like I had to, I had to teach my my oldest because I have three girls. I had to teach yes. my oldest school for a while, cause, yeah, for all the things that you know what happened. And I still have the other two I have to entertain as well. So there's there's definitely been change. My cooking skills are starting to get exquisite. I'm on a whole new level than I thought I was going to be on. So I was going to take up cooking just because I want to learn. Now I'm forced 
mm-hmm. to, to definitely, you know, exchange my palate and the, and the people in the household. Because as you know, with children, you can only really recycle two or three foods before they stop eating and they need to eat. <laughs> so, you know, I'm learning new tricks with, with macaroni and cheese and all this other stuff. But life is definitely uh, rich. And I think when we stop looking at all of the information that's been put out there and start looking at what is in front of us and, and the, the life that is blossoming, like you just said, we can grasp onto a lot and we can we'll work a lot harder when we when we visualize it. We're looking for something else. We're looking for the 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 mighty staff and rod to come down and save us and take us to the, 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 the mm-hmm. promised land, but we're not willing to work for it. We forget yeah. that we have to work to get to that, that aspect. Yeah. And we're in the middle of working hard. I, yeah. I didn't have labor, so I don't know how painful it is, but I think our country right now, our, our humanity right now is going through a birthing process. And this is probably the crowning. I don't know how it feels, but I know a lot of people are in a lot of pain, and I think that's kind of my my correlation with it. It's we're just in the birthing process, and I think once we come through the canal, we're gonna we're gonna have a whole new being. Yep, we're gonna you know be all right. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be all right. Yeah, I I agree with you. You know, um, tomorrow isn't promised, uh, but but today is worth living. And uh, Cheryl, you had said about being intentional. That's something we talk about quite often here on Solmanad is being intentional. Um, you know, be be purposeful, be intentional, um, be present, um, choose how you spend your time uh, and, and choose it wisely. So, you know, I just, I hope that our viewers are encouraged. You know, we keep talking about being a part of community. Uh, the outcome is going to be glorious I know it and we we don't want to lose folks along the way whether you know it's to you know this virus or losing their minds to these uh, conspiracy theories come on back come on back the water's the water is good <laughs> the food is good the community is good come on back and join us because we are moving forward together we're locking hearts together we're locking arms together and we're moving forward toward the greater good Good. Together we can and together we will. So stay encouraged, be encouraged. Y'all take care of yourselves. Reach across the street, reach across the aisle safely <laughs> and um, check on your loved one. Check on your friends. Uh, and, you know, I have said before, be intentional with that call and say, how are you doing today? Is there anything I can do for you? You know, as opposed to for years, you know, so often we would say, hey, if you need anything, give me a call. From what I'm hearing, a lot of people aren't reaching out. They're they're suffering in silence. And so we don't want anybody to suffer in silence. And, and we're willing to just come right along with you and, and love on you and encourage you. And you guys remember that love wins. And when you inhale love, you exhale compassion. And so we want to encourage you to also have compassion and empathy for your fellow man, regardless of what they're going through. It may not be your experience, but certainly we can have empathy and compassion for the plight of another. Amen. Any final words, Cheryl, before we sign off? I just want to say thank you for allowing me to be on with you today and to the other people who have been on Robert and Jace, Jason and Chris mm-hmm. and that you know it's it's not over I, I jokingly was talking to a friend of mine and um, they were saying how like, we're in the last days I and this is a tribulation I said well a lot of us have got left behind I thought I was going so it's not the tribulation it's yeah. not you know it's not that we're not there yet but yeah. we can definitely um, live this life to the fullest in the midst yeah. of a pandemic. Um, and right. just, I just want to encourage you to be, be honoring, be respectful, be kind mm-hmm. to other people during this time, whether they agree with you or not, mm-hmm. because uh, life is too short. It's yeah. too short to waste it being mad mm-hmm. and angry and resentful and mean. It yeah. just is. 
is and all we're... that'll do is just spread that toxicity and that that um, that 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 waste and that garbage and darkness within yourself. Mm-hmm. If you're harboring bitterness, anger, and unforgiveness toward another, so today choose to release that. Choose to release that and let them go. Let it yeah. go. Whatever that you need to do, but always make sure that you do it in love. Rob, any final words before we sign off? Um, yeah, I, 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 I love that Cheryl talked about uh, the end times because I've heard that a lot. Me too. Um, and I, and I, you know, I have a different view of eschatology and um, it's more of a victorious view. And so um, I always tell people, um, don't worry about the end times. Worry about your own end time. What are you going to do until you're, you're in? And yeah. that, that's what people should be concerned about, not the end times, because centuries and centuries people have declared the end times you know Mm -hmm. in our lifetime the 60s 70s you can go through every decade there's somebody or some group of people declaring at the end times yeah so um it's not the end it's a beginning it's a new beginning for our country it's a new beginning for you and to look at the future with a lot of hope and like uh sonia said uh a lot of uh, breathing in love and uh, and exhaling uh, compassion and empathy yeah. for your brothers and sisters, which is everybody, because there is no other. There's just us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's so good. I think we have so much more in common with our fellow man than that which we do not. So let's just focus on that and find ourselves right here, you know, at the center. Uh, well, I love you all very much you all know that i thank you uh cheryl and rob for returning to the show and jason thank you for joining us here y'all know i'm bringing jason on as a co-host here in a couple weeks so thank you guys all for coming together and being a part of this community conversation here today on the soul monad show with sonia and i love you guys and we'll stay in touch thank you you guys Thanks so much. Thanks. So for all of you that are out there, um, stay blessed and and stay encouraged and stay hopeful. And this show today is dedicated to my girl, Michelle, um, and to her family. I love you very much. I'm praying for you, standing with you, and um, and trusting God uh, for you, Michelle, and for the entire family. So. We'll chat with you guys uh, next week. If you have any comments or questions that you'd like to submit, you can go ahead and submit that here through social media or on the website at soulmonad.com. So you'll stay blessed in whatever you put your hands to do until next time. Ciao. Right, Sonia, we're offline. I'm so sorry okay. for your loss. Or, or whatever, you know, I'm sorry. But yeah. We're not live anymore? No, 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 no. we're not. Okay. No. Um, I was looking for the show on my personal page, but I never saw it posted there. I, you know, I was wondering that too. I was wondering if I always streamed that one because it wasn't in my menu. Did you change any permissions by chance? No, I didn't. Yeah, right. I and didn't that's so. where we get all of our interaction from. I, I mean, I posted... Um, Did you do a Google Watch to it? Or I'm sorry, not a Google Watch, just a Facebook Watch to it? Uh, I no, I shared it. and learned that we can absolutely do those Google Watch. Like the Google Watch goes to your people the exact same way. Or Google uh, Watch Parties. Um, but... What we can do is, well, I mean, I can just repost the episode to it, if you like, you know, like directly to your page. Yeah, I mean, I posted it to our page, but then that that's, then I don't get the interaction from our viewers. So uh, I don't know. This is confusing. Yeah, well. Let me see. Um, unfortunately, it was, it was, uh, we got an almost comical amount of, uh, with those guys dropping off the call after I'd asked them not to do that. And that's what mm-hmm. was like, oh my gosh, that was crazy how much it shuffled the deck. We got it regular, like it's fine. We got it regulated and stuff, but um, but yeah, so that's what I was 
Well, visually, and I saw them drop off, but visually, um, from what I saw as I was watching the show, um, there there were no hiccups uh, visually. No, no. Oh, I, neck. Um, the only hiccups were stuff that probably you wouldn't know or were yeah. like, uh, so Jason would drop off because he'd go get his daughter or something, and then he'd mm-hmm. come back up and it would, he'd switch spots with Robert. <laughs> Yeah. So then their names or whatever, and I'd be like, oh, my God, come on. And then I'd get it set, and he'd drop off again. I was, so there was like a little a cat and mouse game he's unaware of that was going on yeah. the whole time. But, yeah. no, it was, yeah. it was fine. And, and it's um, looking at okay, what so, t- Oh, yeah. How do we, what do we do then? Okay, so I'm looking at my personal page, and I said join us, but that's just on Solmenade. And then there it is again. 